Okay, so this is a sine wave with the dimmer at full bright, and you can see that uh, it's just a standard regular incandescent dimmer, and you can see that the, it's starting to chop here and here, basically on the forward part of the curve. This is a 60 hertz, so this cycle right here from zero over to zero, because it goes uh, 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, or 360 is back to zero. So that's one hertz. So the 60 hertz is 60 cycles a second, so that's 1 60th of a second. So it chops, you can see it chops twice as I start to shrink it. You can see what's happening is the way that the triac's firing See, it's basically chopping it there by not firing. And as that shrinks, you can see the frequency is going all over the place. And as the load changes, so I'm dropping the load, dropping the load, and watch what happens to the curve. Bam. This is with a reduced load because the voltage is dropping, and then you see that the And this is why dimmers with minimum loads start to re go bananas. And they had dimmers that would take this sine wave and it would just shrink it up until it went to zero. And since the waveform integrity stayed intact, they wouldn't pass this garbage on to whatever was being powered. But that is a much more expensive way to uh, dim. Literally, the dimmers today, wall box dimmers, they might have, if you take away the, the packaging and the enclosure around the components, it may have uh, half a dozen components, the real simple ones. And so it does a quick and dirty job of reducing the voltage so the point I'm making is is that when you're using a product that chops the waveform like this then it may not be possible in some circumstances to handle every possible situation. So when it's up towards full bright, it doesn't cause a lot of problems. But then as the dimmer kicks in, you can see that the waveform is changing. When the waveform changes, that basically introduces noise onto the line, and you can see that that doesn't look anything like a normal waveform. And so, whatever is being powered is going to do its best to translate that. But you can see if any device, um, say there's a driver that has, uh, that's trying to maintain a constant current, even when it's dimming, or uh, anything with um, filtering on it of some sort, it's going to attempt, basically right here is zero, so it's going to drain the energy from the circuit, spike, drain the energy, spike, and so that's why you can get some flickering, because it will start to drop, and we'll get the spike, flicker, start to drain, flicker, start to drain, flicker, so it comes back to the dimmer, and how things are dimmed. 
Okay, I just swapped off over dimmers. Different dimmer, different wall box dimmer, different manufacturer. You can see this one is at full bright, doesn't even get up to a full sine wave. This one also doesn't turn off. If I go down to zero, you'll see it's letting through a residual voltage. So when people get excited and they say, well, your transformer doesn't turn off, or your driver doesn't turn off, or this doesn't turn off, when the dimmer goes to zero, this is why. There's nothing that we can do about the dimmer. But you start getting into solid state applications, electronics, especially when you're using a dimmer that chops voltage, this is voltage, to drive LEDs that are current driven devices. Now you're trying to translate a bunch of different ways. So this is what a waveform, an AC waveform, looks like when it's dimmed with a wall box dimmer. Control systems will look very similar. Some better, some worse. That's off. So you can see what off looks like.